Okay, great. Okay. So now y'all can hear me. Okay. Oh, oh sure. No. Yeah. Now, hold on a second, guys. Let me just check something here on YouTube. Okay. All right. So, everyone, welcome to the second interview training session. I hope you're all as excited as I am to get started on this new problem. How do we all feel? Everybody's excited, man. They, they, can't, con they can't control their excitement. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, <laughs> I'm looking at all corners of the room. But uh, today, we'll be going over some two-pointer problems. Um, so last time, we did two-sum, and we did it with a hash map. Uh, and a hash set could also be used. Because in this case, in three-sum, let me actually put it right now. Okay, here we go. Okay. Uh, let me put it in Python because that's what we were doing it with. We're also good with Python, right? Okay. No objections. So, before in Tucson, who, who remembers what we did? What we had to do? I'm asking, I'm asking the audience. Who remembers what we did to solve two sum? We constructed the uh, hash map here in the dictionary. Right. And why did we use the dictionary? To store the, uh, the values in the array. Yeah. Yeah, to store, yeah, to store it and not to go back to it. Yeah. So that's basically why we used it. So we also used it because it was important that the indices were untouched. They had to stay in their place. The values had to stay in their place. So in contrast to that problem, this one's a little different. So it's a different constraint. You don't have that constraint. In fact, let's read the problem right now. So we're giving an integer array nums, right? And we have to return all triplets, nums i, j, and k, such that i doesn't equal j, j doesn't equal k, i doesn't equal k. They're all different. And they all add up to 0. Do we get this so far? So basically, we want to return uh, what? OK, there's some technical issues there. So uh, do we get what we want to do? So we want to return triple set add up to 0. So what does that mean? We're not returning i, j, or k. We're just returning nums i, j, or k. So we're just returning the number values in the array. So indices don't matter. We don't care about indices. So, okay, do you all remember what was the one thing I told you all to do to start this problem off? Yes, someone in here said to sort it. Hello. And, and how long will this take in time complexity? And log in. Does anybody agree with that? Agree. You agree? Agree. What do you agree with? <laughs> okay, why is it and log in? Hey, listen, <laughs> we can't be. See, we want to. Right, so in a sorting algorithm, it's usually a comparison sort. And the fastest a comparison, comparison sort can be is n log n, n being the size of the array. So on time is big O of n log n. All right? OK. So question, who thinks that this will be the longest taking part of the algorithm, and thus its time complexity will be limited or capped by this step? A show of hands. Who, who thinks that this will be the longest running part of the algorithm? Should this be the longest running part? Yeah. 
You say no. Yeah. Well, I think you solved it. <laughs> you solved it already. I want it from someone who didn't. I didn't solve it. I got like halfway through. <laughs> you got halfway through? Yeah. Well, you're going to get all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. You will finish it today. Um, so, I'm just going to, well, I'll let you guys figure it out um, as we go through it. So, I like to start off by having an answer variable already set up. So, it's a list of lists, so I'm going to have ands be an empty list to start off with. And uh, just to get it out of the way, I'm going to return it. But in between, I'm obviously going to put the code. So, we sorted the array of numbers. What do I need to do after that? Do you remember what I mentioned about the other two sorts? What did I say about the other two sorts? Anyone here? Right. OK. So if we were doing doubles, right, all I need to do is just get the right and left pointer for this and just go like that, right? Yeah. So uh, oh, it flashed blue. Hmm? The thing flashed blue. The, oh, no, wait. it's because I waved my hand. The camera. Oh, no, it's fine. Oh, it's fine? OK. Uh, you also used a dictionary. I used a dictionary, right. So that was the hash table part, was me using a dictionary. So what was I, what was I talking about before I did the thing? Um, Two-pointer, two left and right, and I just add them. So it's triplets. So it's a little different. Oh, so you can't make a middle pointer with three, right? You could do that. There's a simple, simpler way to do it. It's a much simpler way. We don't need to do the middle. In fact, it's better if we did something. Well, do you know what he means by having a middle pointer and moving the other two? Do you know what he means by that? Can I? Well, here it is. I wonder if they can uh, see the screen here. OK. So um, I'm going to write it here. Let me know if you can see it or not. So he was saying we have a sorted. I'll leave it like that. And so we have a, a left, a right, and you said middle, right? Yes. So we want a triplet. We want to sort in the list. I want it to be three numbers that add up to zero. And it has to be all of them. So how many are there? So add them up together, and yeah, they do. So I'm going to put 0, right? And then oh, what do I do? Do I move one of them down, or both? I probably just move the left one down one of OK. And oh, thank you. Yeah. So then we could add this one. And then um, it would make more sense to move the right one. Do all these triplets add to 0? Right. So there's a better way of doing this. Any ways to, to actually structure this a little bit more uh, concisely? I'll give you a hint. Maybe we could put this somewhere else. Where should we move this pointer? Where the other two pointers are coming together. In the beginning? OK. So he said, call this I. Oh, I almost fell there. <laughs> In the beginning. OK? So he said, put it in the beginning. 
So now we have, uh, well, actually, I'll call this J and K. Okay, so keep this here, right? And then we're going to add up all these three, and if they add up to zero, then add it to the list. So they do. So it's going to be, well, they don't here, actually. This is negative one. So this is too small. If this is too small, what do we do? Right. Exactly. Move the left one to the right. Now they do add up. So now they add up. So what can we do after that? Well, we want to check all for J and K, right? And since they're both the same, we can't do it anymore because they're both the same index. So we stop. So then at that point, we want I to not go here. OK? And then we move J and K here and start over. And so negative 1, 0, 1. And uh, you keep doing it. So what's the time complexity of this? Who? Sorry? N squared. 2n? Big of n squared. N squared. Why is it big of n squared? Someone else. OK, so basically, i keeps moving up. And for every time i moves up, you have to move these two together. And that's also an, a linear operation. So it's a linear within a linear, so it's O of n squared. So you're going to use a uh, for loop, while loop, it doesn't matter, but you're going to use two nested loops. That's what you're going to use here. One loop nested into another. But you all get the structure, right? OK. Um, so let's actually start coding it. See that. I'll move it a little bit smaller. Is it taller than the specific because two pointers inside the loop? What? Is it taller than the specific because two pointers inside the loop? So, yeah, you're pretty much just looping and then doing two pointer every time you iterate through. So, I, I think that's just pretty much it. Okay. Two pointers in a loop. Let me go back over here. Okay. So, I'm going to go with I in range. So, what do I go up to? I don't have to put zero, but I will. So I up to what? Len nums, right? Is this right? Okay, why do I not have to go to the very end? You can't have like a left and a right corner. Exactly. So you need to go I up to where you can have a left and right pointer. And they all have to be different. So how much space should we allot? Exactly. So we stop there. When it goes to len nums minus 2, stop. Because then we have two extra uh, integers spots where we can do the two-pointer solution. OK. So now I'm going to say j is what? i plus 1, right? And k is? Actually, why don't we just do this to make things more concise and short? Do that. Also, man, this is unnecessary. It starts at zero by default. All right. So now I'm here at this part. So what was what do I have to do next? Right. Well, 
Would compare what? Right. Only once? Only, only once, or I have to keep moving the pointers, right? Okay. Right. And it's like this, right? All j is less than k. Do you know why it's less than k and not less than or equal to? Yeah, they can't be the same value, exactly. They can't be the same index. All right. So I'm going to just say that we have a candidate list, right? Nums i, nums j, and nums k. And I'm going to say that the uh, summation, we'll call it addition, is equal to the sum of that list. So that's going to return the sum of all those in this list array. Do we get that part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to add the list. If we, you probably could do this in a different way. Hello. No, that's cool. Don't worry about it. We appreciate you coming. So there is probably is a different way of doing it. You could just say uh, num. OK, fine. But, but we get this. Well, we get why we do this. So, f so for those of you who just came, we're doing threesome, right? Uh, so basically, we're going to have a pointer here, and then we're going to do two pointers, and they're going to come together. And basically, we want to return triplets uh, that add up to zero in the list. Hello. Yes, yes. All right. So we're going to do. So we add them up. And there is something else that I'm going to do, but I'll leave that for last. So okay. So let's say um, oh no. Let's say our sum that we get, our addition, is too low. What do we have to do? What do, what do we mention before that we have to do before it's too low? Which one do we increment? Right. So then that's J, right? What now? It's too big. It's too big, what do we do? Yeah. Just k. Now, let's say actually it's 0. What do we want to do when it's 0? We want to append it. Right. And then we want to also change the pointers of j and k. Right? Does that make sense? Why we want to change both? Yeah, because it's faster. No. Well. You just, I know, I know, I know. You <laughs> just got here and you're just getting in here. Yeah, so we want to find other combinations. Exactly. Right, we want to find other combinations because we already went through this one, right? So we want to change both pointers. Okay, yeah. Wait, why do we decrement k? Because k is the right pointer, so it's the greater value, and j is the left pointer, the lesser value. Okay, if it's too low, uh, well, actually, I think your left and right are inverted from my view. Uh, I, is this left? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the left value is less. So if it's too small, move the left value to the right, and it'll be bigger, I mean, potentially. And if it's too big, move the right po pointer, which is bigger, point it to the left so that it's smaller. Does that make sense? Yeah. So in that problem you have on the board, what if it's negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1? Negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1? Yeah. And where are we at? We're here? Yeah. So if it's negative 1, 1, and we're here, yeah. right? So they all equal, so we add them. Yeah, but then now if you increment j, then decrement 
right. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Sure. We'll get to that right now. We'll get to that right now. Okay. So do you well do you think this solution works? Okay. You must not, yeah. So, Thomas, thank you. You must notice that the solution cannot contain duplicate triplets. And right here I have duplicated, is it? it says negative one, zero, one, which is a major coincidence that I have here as well. I did not plan that. I just, it's just there, but I, I thought that was the easiest to reach for. So anyway, we cannot have duplicate. So what do we do to make sure that doesn't happen? Okay, uh, we could do a dictionary, but I'm thinking we do a hash set instead. Okay, y do you want to guess why? You don't need, yeah, you don't need key value pairs. You just need to store that you've seen that, that value already. Right. Hash set, yeah. We don't need, it. I'm saying we don't need a dictionary. A dictionary, it's a hash map. Yeah. Set, it's a set, yeah. So we want to have a set, uh, give it an arbitrary name and call it scene. And what do you think we're going to store in this scene set? This so this, right? Yeah. Okay. So here, right, we will say that if list not in scene, what does that mean? Any ideas what? Oh my God. If the current array that you're looking at has not been already added yeah. to your set, then be correct. No, if it's not been added, then append it to the answer list, right? Only append it if we haven't already seen it. And we're going to add that list, right? It's on this. If list unhashable, right. So, um, yeah, sorry about that. So we need to store it in a tuple. Tuples are hashables. Call it tuple. So instead of a list that gave us a problem, lists are not hashable, so we can't put it in this hash set or Python set. So we have to make a tuple of the original uh, list, and this time, this time it'll work. Okay, add. That is strange. You didn't set. I think you needed something else. Huh? Right. Call it set. Oh, yeah. Call it set. Oops. Oh, actually, if that's the case, then I can just do this. Never mind, yeah. Okay, so I do need a tuple. Okay. Wait, you have a question for you guys. If, let's say you couldn't do a tuple. You, you know you can do a list and you couldn't do a tuple. How else can you do it? Sorry? You can't do a list. Let's say you can't add a tuple to a set. What's some, or, what's some other way that you can add it? Not a secret. You know, you can do it. I'll probably keep going on to 
So right here, oh, okay. let me put this down for a minute. So, okay. so right now, uh, I sorted it to start out. This was n log n. Then I set n to be the length of the list. Answer. This is the list that we are, I am returning, right? This is the answer, ants. Then scene is the set that sees, oh, OK, I've seen this triplet already. All right, so I won't add it to the list. I'll, I'll, so, and if it hasn't seen it, add it to the list and say that the scene set has seen that triplet. OK. So then i goes from 0 to n minus 2. Why? Just to oh, refresh. Wow. Yeah, I know you just got here. No, no, no. Like, I, I want to answer. OK, yeah, yeah. So um, n minus 2 because uh, we already have one index occupied by i. Mm -hmm. And the other one that we're subtracting is because indexes always start at 0. OK, OK, but, but i end at n minus 2. But why does i end there? Why does it end there? Hmm. It doesn't end at the end. I'm, I'm ending it two slots before. Why? Why am I leaving two slots? For j and k? Yes, OK, yeah, there, that's it. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then we do j and k, we do the two-pointer stuff with j and k. That's exactly why. Uh, because in k is n minus 1, uh, it has to be that. OK. So um, and that's this part right here. We get them close together. Uh, so actually, is there a way we can optimize this a little bit? Yeah. You can remove the answer with the problem first. You know what? You can remove the answer with answer with answer with line work first. I can remove answer? Okay. Which one? 19. Oh, 19. This one? If top not in scene. Oh, okay. Yeah. So wait, I actually don't know. How do you return a tuple? But it has to be a list. Well, that's the thing. Actually, the 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 set will be a set of tuples, not a, a set of lists. And I need it to be a list of lists. But how do I how do I turn its its va its values? Tuple to list. Oh, okay. Uh, no, but I mean, oh, okay. Hold on. I'll do this. Okay. So return. OK, but I want each of its values to be, actually, wait, hold on. Uh, I'm going to do val, val, and scene, and then oh, I see. I should, I should call it tuple. Why, why don't I do that?
Oh, okay, great. Yes. Do we get what do we get what this is? This part right here? It's like very Python specific. Uh, kind of yeah, it, it basically lists comprehension. So I'm going through each value in the scene hash set. So it's kind of like a list as well. Um, and basically for each, I'm saying, okay, so for each tuple I get in scene, I'm turning that into a list. And I get all these into a list of itself, which is why it's inside like the brackets. Do we get that? Any questions about that? Hmm? No, no. Uh, according according to him, we don't. Thank you. So, I'm I'm just gonna comment it out. Oh, no comment. Not used to Mac. Okay, let me. I'll keep it like this. I'm actually going to do this instead. See if that works. Okay, that works just fine. All right. Uh, so there's another way we can also optimize this. Any ideas on what it is? Actually, since we're doing it as okay, we're returning scene. Never mind. We'll leave it like this. Okay, we're leaving it. We're leaving it like this. Any questions on what we've done so far? Huh? Okay, so you, but, you, but you wrote it down on the leak code? Yeah, I, I have the code from the code file. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what's the runtime? Yeah. I feel like it's like mapping and like stuff like that. It could probably come up a lot more if you can type on really big, not like today, but in terms of like. We do. How like more like functional like mindset, I guess. I'm not sure. So, if you do that. The, the reason why I did this. So it could be pretty and in one line. And another reason is that it's actually faster than doing a for loop. It's also time or space. Yeah, space yeah. too. It's in terms of space, yeah, definitely. You don't have to like go through like the for loop and adding and appending. Yeah, it's fine actually because uh, for mapping kind of thing, it's just so. So let's actually submit this. All right, well, we got it. Running solution. All right, and if you all want, you can do some of the harder ones. Uh, three some closest, smaller, and then four some, which is basically just what we did. If you want, I mean, you know. Uh, okay, so actually, what's the runtime? The time complexity? Why is it all n squared? Exactly. So you're basically having a nested loop. The nested loop is n, and the encasing, the one encasing that is also n, right? So the time complexity of o is O of n squared. So the time complexity is not bounded by the by the sorting algorithm. The sorting algorithm basically did nothing for you, right? Well, I mean, it did take time, but it, it doesn't matter because the actual solution itself took a lot longer. So we needed to sort it. It was actually very useful to sort the nums array before starting. Are we clear on, on, on the reason for that, right? OK. What? The space complexity, okay. What's the space complexity of this problem? Mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, it's linear, exactly. Yeah, so it's a linear uh, time complexity because you're gonna have this set and you have to keep on adding to it. And it's gonna be 
Oh, it, it, yeah. Could be many triplets, too. Uh, I think worst case, it could be like, if there's like uh, so many triplets, it could be like n squared. Uh, Maybe, I don't know. But, but the triplets are all the elements of the list given, right? Right. That's a good point. So basically, I think it has to be O of n because there's no duplicate triplets. OK. So we're moving on to the next problem. Oh my god, I keep doing that. So that was one two-pointer problem. Another two-pointer is where's the container. Did you push that? No. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. So now we are on a new problem, and it's container with water, with most water. How does this problem work? So you're given an integer array height, and it's of length n. There are n vertical lines drawn such that two endpoints of the i line are i0 and i height i. Find two lines that together with the x-axis form a container such that the container contains the most water. Return the maximum amount of water a container can store. You may not slant the container. I don't, wor don't worry too much about that. All right. Do we get? Do we get? Uh, do we get what the problem's asking? Yeah, it's an area problem. It's an area problem. So, what area are we looking for? The biggest. Okay, based on what? Um, the height of the bar and the length between the two bars. Okay, exactly. And you can pick any two bars. Could be this bar and this bar, this bar and this bar, uh, or this bar and this bar, right? So what's the most important part to get the area between two bars? Make sure that um, the water doesn't overfill so you have the height correct. Okay, so which, so what does that mean? What, what, what do we need to do to height correct to make sure the water doesn't overfill? Exactly. We use the smallest height. So the water will not overfill if it only goes up to the smallest height. Correct? So in this case, it will be this one. This height is smaller than this one. So we say that this is the height of the area. And what's the width? Exactly. This will be the space, right? So it's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times 7. So the output is 49. So good? So good so far? All right. So that's the maximum height. And that's another one. Okay. All right. How do we, how do we start uh, working on this problem? Well, how about this? How about I give you a hint? Start with the smallest possible answer is zero. But where do we go from here? We use the two pointers. So how do we use the two pointers? Oh, okay, so we're going to that one. All right, we're going to that one. So we're going to go left and right, right? So I'm going to say uh, yeah, whatever. L R equals zero, and yeah. Because the it right, or tallest one because the water level will be the same. Okay, but basically we want the minute with the smallest bar, right? Let's um 
It's like a lake at a mountain. Well, maybe not, that's not the best comparison. <laughs> well, consider that a mountain uh, valley or whatever has a lake, right? The water goes up to the smallest peak of that little valley thing. Yeah. That's basically the idea. So the height is going to be from the base, if it reaches sea level or something. In this case, it does reach sea level up to the smallest peak. Does that make sense? So, so see, if the water started going over the smaller height, it will go overfill. OK. So basically, uh, <laughs> all right, I'm just, I'm just memeing a bit, guys. Come on. Uh, but basically, it only goes up to the smaller height. OK? Is that clear? OK. So that's all we have to worry about. So, so, so what, what do we do? We do left, right. Where do we go from here? No. <laughs> no. 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 You're not. Well, the reason is because each uh, height has its place. It's supposed to be like that way. Or if you, if, I mean, imagine if you sorted this, you change the positions, yeah. and the answer is based on their positions, yeah. their relative positions. So you have to keep them there. Yeah. So no, sorting is is not uh, applicable to this problem. So always remember that when you're solving a problem, you need to find what applies. You know, what might have applied somewhere else may not apply here. So do consider that. Hey, maybe you need a uh, some sort of max answer. Like you need to calculate the max on like every plane. Right. Okay. And then say using like the max function, you can pass on the and then you try to replace it every time if you can't replace it, then you know that's the max. Okay. Okay, so basically we're going to max the answer. So but how, do we, how do we move the pointers? It's my question. Okay, get the max on the left. How do we find that? So you have more water closer to the middle, I'm saying. Well, that's a good point. But actually, what if you could? You could very well happen. I mean, it could be that the you know these are small heights, and in the absolute middle, uh, one height is a million, and the other height is two million. So then, it could very well be that the very middle one spot has the most water. So, not quite like that. So. I propose that before we do an actual good solution, we do a bad one. This is my proposal. And this is one that will work. And that is to use brute force. Yeah, brute force. Go through the whole thing? Huh? You, you just go through the whole thing and find the max. Ex yeah. yeah. Go through the whole thing. But, but what are we, OK, yes. Yeah, uh, one question here. So uh, for there, we have uh, two A's, right? Which? which? Yeah. So my question is, uh, the last uh, eight value, at least nine, at least nine, assume. Which one? Okay. The last third eight uh, digit value. No, yeah. This one right here? No, no, no. The last eight. No, no, no. This, no, no, no. this one. He, this one right here. No, no, no. Oh, so if you add another one? No. no. The, the, the one that has the value of eight. The far right eight. eight. He's saying hypothetically. That one. That one. Yeah. This one. Hypothetically. I was on that one. Yes. Do we still consider the values three and seven? Which one? Three and three and seven. Do you, you mean the this? Value or eight, three and nine. Assume. Uh, do we still consider the value three and seven as a maximum? Well, 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 th well, I mean, that would be the max height, right? But we don't care about max height. We care about the minimum height. We care about maximizing volume. 
And volume really means area in the context of this problem. We want to maximize area. And sometimes maximizing area may mean finding a lower height, but that could mean a greater width. You see what I mean? So this, this, the solutions of the problems are a little like, it's complicated. It's not as simple as just, oh, find a bigger height over to the left. Yeah, it, it could be a little bit confusing. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, let's say um, this was shorter, right? Like down here. Then the answer would probably be uh, this one. You see? Yeah. So see, it's not about height or even width. It's a combination of both, right? Because length times height is the area. So we could do a bad solution. Well, it's not bad. It's a, it's a working solution. But it is necessary that we do it, right? So just so we understand what we're trying to solve. So I'm going to say two-pointer, right? It's still two-pointer. Uh, actually, hold on. Let me go back. Do this one. Okay. So I'm actually going to do something. I'm going to go by width. As, just stop me if you if you have questions. Yeah. Okay. That's exactly it. Please do stop me if you do have questions. Actually, I'll stop right here. Okay, who has questions about this? So far, I'm not done. It's not too clear. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll do right the now. I'll do the full thing just to make it. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry. That's better. And W. I'm just doing that to be more concise, but I. You lost the message when I did that. So. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, okay. Now, now is it is it better, guys? Yeah. Okay. So what am I? Why am I doing that? Why am I starting off this way? No. Yeah. Okay. You're trying to find the area between the left and the right. Yeah. Okay. So, what do we have to do? We have to get the height, right? Well, I'm actually going to do ht because we already have height up here. So, what do we say about what's going to be the height? Mm, well, remember, to get the area, well, to get the height we want from an area, we need the minimum one. Right. Right. Oh. So it's the minimum of what? Between the left and right index? Exactly. This is kind of what makes it two pointer. You have left and right pointer. So. And the answer, right? We want to change the answer. What could the answer have to be? Height. Oh, no, it's height times uh, the difference between the two indices, right? Right. The right that and left pointer. That's the what? Height and? Uh, left minus right? We could do that, but look, we already took care of that right here. So what's left? What's right minus left? 
If left plus width equals right, what's right minus left? If left, if right minus left equals, what is what is right minus left? Width. Yes, it's width. And that's what we want to do. We to get the area, we multiply width times height. And not only that, we want to maximize it. So maybe answer already has a bigger answer. So we maximize answer equals the maximum between itself and oh. width. Right? Oh, wow. I have never thought of using those functions that way. Can you get it together? Yeah, you can do the math, that math dot max. What? OK. So will this work? <laughs> I didn't notice that. <laughs> Wait, hold on. What is this? If right, this thing. Hold on. You you never declared height. Height is the the, the input. You do it with two. You're absolutely right, dude. What am I doing? What am I doing? Thank you. Okay. All right. So. If I submit it, I'm sorry, Lazaro. It's fine. It's a different question. OK. Because this is not an optimized solution. No, and, not. and why isn't it? Actually, before I continue on to why it isn't, do we know what's actually happening? No. Oh, there we go. Time limit. Sorry, Lazaro. You, I ruined your, your record. Well, what's so, so what's, huh? Is that yes. Yeah. I'm on his laptop. I'm yeah, sorry. I mean, personally, I don't. <laughs> I mean, personally, I don't care if he did it to me on my official session. So it's it's so it's good, you know. It's like it's not then. Okay, but what's happening? What's actually happening? What what is my code doing? We're brute forcing this. Okay, but how are we brute forcing this? Right. So I have two pointers, right? Right. So I'm going to just keep it small and simple. So I have uh, left and right. Yeah, OK. And I can have water between. And so basically what I do, right, is I compare the area here, then here. Actually, can the camera see this? Oh, I didn't even take that into account. I'm going to give myself some space. OK, then I'm going to move here, compare the area, then here. Then I'm going to come here. OK? Do we see that? And what do I do after this? Yes, I make the width bigger. Exactly. And then I keep moving it up with the bigger width. And I keep doing it. Yeah. I keep doing it until I get to this point. Right. So what am I doing? What am I effectively doing? I'm basically brute forcing all widths and all pairs. Right? OK. You all see how this is still two pointer. Yeah. Right, because I still have two pointers pointing to different heights. All right, this is not the optimized way of doing it. I mean, you just saw that I got time limit exceeded. So, what do you think I have to do? It's a bit of a trick, the actual solution. Your brain's going to go. It's actually fine if, if you don't get it, I mean, at first. 
I didn't get it. <laughs> you could, but we don't have to. We don't need, we actually don't need a dictionary, but see, that's the part that where you don't, it may not be so clear why you don't need one. Keep it like that. Like the starting that way, but the other way around? You mean like this? Yeah, like we start with the biggest width and then we go down. But it's not doing the same thing effectively? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but my logic was, well, we're finding the same thing. We did it right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. Like Okay. Like this? Is this is what you're saying? What is the value of it? The value of what? L. L is zero. And R is N minus one, so you know, the end of the list. What happened? Yeah, it is. I'll value, okay, uh, this is Python notation. You can do everything in one line. Then I'll, I'll, I'll do this and make it, make it like that. Okay. Okay, all right. And I say the left value is, uh, you know what? I'll do the same thing. I have time. No. All right. And I'm going to say with equals r minus r l. And we'll see why we need it in a minute. OK. All right. So well, it's hard to do it with this, actually. That's actually a little hard to do with that. So what should I do next? I have my left and my right values. Can I compare an answer now? I could. Right? Why not? Well, we still need to get the values first. Like if we iterate through the array, we'll just end up doing the same thing as last time, right? Well, that's the thing. We're only going to iterate once. All right. Can the current, so I'm going to say same thing as before. HT equals min uh, all right, I'll leave it like that. This can still work. Okay. What matters now is thank you for coming. So this can still work. We just need to be careful about our next couple of steps. Actually, you know what? Maybe I will do it here. All right, so we're let's say we're here, right? And we evaluate this, and this is uh, one, two, three, 
five. I, it's not really that ordered. I'll just say that this is five, this is one. Okay? So, what we want to do, we want to get the area at first. And this is uh, this four times four plus 16. So we keep that in there. So now we want to move these pointers in a certain way, right? So how do we move the why? What? How do we move the pointers? Uh, whichever one is shorter, you move closer to the other one. And why is that? So that theoretically, if you move width, you make up for its height. So I'm gonna move this one. So we don't know it. It may not be so obvious, but it could be possible that we find one. And this could be seven, right? Do we see that? And it could be that now, uh, if I do the area here, it's going to be greater than this one. Is that clear? Yeah. It could be greater. It could be three times five, and it's 15. I mean, it's not. but. We have to consider that. So if uh, left is smaller than right, right, then we want to move the left pointer to the right. But if that's not the case, then we move the right pointer to the left one. OK? Let's run and see what happens. Will it work? It works. Who's who's got their brain and they just went I having trouble understanding this. Yeah? Yeah. But what if it was already the tallest at four, right? Um, well, I mean, when a problem is going comparing values in an array, it won't know that. Oh, but we're, we're saving it in answers is max. Okay. okay, answer, yes, exactly. In answers max, we maximize the answer. So right. we're just right. going to keep the maximum answer there already. Right. So, yeah, yeah. Now I get it. So now we get it, right? Yes. Okay. It's all about the potential. Right? And also, it could be this kind of potential where it's like, uh, this goes up to, I don't know, 8, 2 times 8 is 16. So it could match the other one that we had. Yeah. So it's always about, you know, figuring out, like, uh, there's the potential for it to be there. We don't know, but this is how we maximize what the largest area could be. All right. Any any questions about this? No questions. Are you sure? Thomas, no questions? Uh, no. I have to do this in your lab, so. Oh, okay. All right. So let's let him finish his lab. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, oh, okay. All right. So this was the problem for today. Um, this is pretty much all we were going to do. We actually finished pretty early. Now the other class can like come in here already. So we have another class coming in this room. So I mean, no, no rushing. But uh, yeah. The The signing? Oh, OK. Um, so, so for those of you who just came in the room, uh, hold on. Is it? Where is the page? Where's the page with it? OK, all right. So yeah, so those of you who just came, please sign in. Um, also, YouTube, you got the bar there in some of the corners there. I don't know if it's the left or the right corner, but uh, yeah.
Homework? OK, so yeah, we're putting out daily leak code questions again, like we were doing last semester. So we were just going to put out daily leak codes of you working stuff out. And tomorrow, Wednesday, Joseph over there, he's going to talk about a follow-up to this, which is a little bit more complicated. It's, it's pretty much going to be in the same realm as this, but with a, an extra caveat, all right? Making it just a bit more challenging. It's a, it's a leak code hard. Yeah, so that's the, basically the plan between Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, tomorrow, Wednesday at 6. Yeah, Wait. we have the mobile oh, meeting yeah, for this semester. Right. Yeah, so do please attend for that. And then next web meeting is, what's the next web? Next Monday. Next Monday at 8 p.m., right? 6, 6 p.m., right. And you're going to teach it? Yeah. Tom is going to teach CSS, advanced CSS, next Monday at 6 p.m. over Zoom. And then like two weeks after that, then I teach JavaScript. So and then two weeks. Like, you might actually want to get that. OK. And two weeks after next Monday, <laughs> so three weeks from now, you're going to learn <laughs> JavaScript. <laughs> yeah. So. And then two weeks after that, he's going to teach the React framework, I'm which is sure really cool. So I hope to see you tomorrow. And oh, also this Friday we have a GitHub uh, workshop at 5:30. So Bought yeah, by him. yeah, by me. They voted me to be. Did they actually? Yeah. They kept asking if I want to do it. Yeah, Paulina asked me.